Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Los Angeles Chronicles in L.A., episode 16. And, I mean, this is a milestone episode. First of all, I want to tell you about this because um, we made it to episode 16, and that means that now I have more episodes than um, my last podcast, which was Spectrum of Possibilities. So I wasn't actually, again, I wasn't on that podcast. I was the sound the technical guy sound engineer whatever and then i was i could kind of chime in here and there that was about uh two women with autism spectrum of possibilities so uh we have 15 episodes and um it was a it was good experience but um i like uh i like this because i get to do my own thing you know so uh i'm still cool with them but i don't think they know about this uh this podcast they had uh they had an episode about friendship, and then they're not even friends anymore, so what's up with that, you know? So, uh, yeah, man, um, this one's uh, dating in L.A., and that's an interesting topic. I'd like to kind of wish someone was sitting here right, uh, sitting here with me right now, but um, I'm going to share my experiences with da- dating in L.A., and this is uh, an explicit content episode, so I'm not going to get too hardcore, but I'm going to uh say what i gotta say so uh yeah man um didn't have uh didn't have one last uh, couple weeks episode because uh we had a thing with the buddhist temple i'm in so it's called the fochi and it's basically you recite the buddha's name amita fo amita fo like thousands of times from i don't know how many times man but i follow the schedule from 4 a.m to 10 p.m and you'd really have to go through that kind of um, schedule to really know like the benefit why you're doing that. And I say it's well worth it for those who follow it. So yeah, we we did that and been working really hard at work. So I got bit by a dog. Actually, I want to say something about that. I got bit by a dog at work, and I feel like I got like I accomplished something actually because. It's a story. It's like, okay, I've been injured. I've been bit by a dog. So what happened was um, I was with my dad on the phone. I said something I shouldn't have said. So then it was literally like uh, two two houses after that. I get back from 10-minute break, and then um, I go to someone's house to the lit to live or to the, to the front door. They didn't even have a, a warning sign or, or a fence to go through. I just went to uh, the front door, and here comes the German Shepherd. So then the German Shepherd like sneaks up out of nowhere, and he didn't. Re- it's not like I got bit. I was okay, but um, he he attacked me, right? Or she attacked me, I don't know. But um, it was it didn't really. It, it, there's enough to put a band aid on it. It was, didn't really bleed or anything, but it was it was a it was a bruise and. I put the package in front of me, so it's like, hey, bite the package, don't bite me, you know, so, and then the the owner came, the master came, and he said, get, 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 get away from him, get away from him, it was like, you know, elderly black couple, like 65 years old or whatever, I was okay, so I was like, hey, I'm okay, and then I told my boss about it, and he said, yeah, you can take a break, if you can still, I can, hey, I can still work, you know, so, but that messed up, like, my whole flow for the rest of the day, and then after that, actually, two other two other people got bit by dogs the same day <laughs> so there's another guy and a girl actually got bit on her arm or something so i get back and then we all work from that day work from like 10 to 9 30 p.m and we're filling out forms we're calling the, the hotline about telling the the information about getting bit by a dog so um yeah so that was a uh, overall I, i'm I'm actually kind of proud that I got bit by a dog. I don't know. Like, it could have been a like, lot of wor- a lot worse than that. Like, that's like straight up hospital visit. That kind of that kind of incident. So um, yeah, like I said, this is a milestone episode. So um, first of all, I want to wish everybody good luck with your dating in LA. Seriously, like seriously, your traffic, your job, your preferences of the perfect person that you're looking for good luck man because uh this is actually about the the online dating field because it seems like i haven't even 
I mean, me personally, I haven't been on a date in like two years, at least that, so online. I mean, because it seems like um, the f- very few people like approach women in public and it seems creepy or something because everybody's always on their phones and then everybody's in this online kind of thing. So you don't want to make someone feel uncomfortable. So the online thing took took over in general it did but me I mean I like asking someone out in perf- person but I had, haven't had the opportunity yet I mean f- uh, first of all I work a lot and when I'm at work like I don't I don't talk to people about a, mu- bu- about a bunch of bullshit you know I just like do my job and it's fast paced so who has time to to really like uh, meeting anybody or asking anybody out, and I don't want to like ask it out, ask out girls at work, too, because I keep I keep it professional. So, yeah, good luck with your with your dating. Uh, not saying it's impossible, but it seems uh, few and far between. Uh, so let's see. I'm gonna share like some of my dating experiences. Um, we're kind of going to, I'm going to go back to kind of back in the day a little bit. Um, this was in my Craigslist days. So when was this? I think like, let's say this is 2009. Yeah, I'd say 2009 when I had the, we had, we had the computer and Craigslist, right? So surprised that actually some, I could get people to hang out with me from such a screwed up website that's known for being screwed up. And bad things happen to people, but uh, see, I went on a date with the uh, went on a date with this girl in Hollywood, and then I think we were we were talking on the phone for about a week before or two weeks, something about she was going to Redondo Beach, and uh, we, yeah, I guess we had some similar stuff in common. She likes some heavy metal, and no, she says she went to go go see uh, she's seen Death the band I mean, live and that's the only person I've ever met that's seen that band live so she was a little bit older than me so and she saw them live like in the 90s maybe 93 so that was cool and we went on a date to go see a movie and uh actually that's not my favorite thing to do on the first date go see a movie I mean I guess yeah, you're in the movie theater and just watching something for two hours, and then, but yeah, we I remember we saw um, R- Righteous Kill, and that would have, that had actually had uh, De Niro, Al Pacino, and Fifty Cent in it, and I thought the movie was whack, but it was something to see. So they were kind of like stereotyping themselves in that one too, like everybody has to act like like that kind of person, and it didn't get good reviews. That was a lame movie, actually. So 2009, yeah. But what I had to say about that date was like, yeah, there wasn't no second date. So I got like a pattern of first dates and then maybe they think I look okay. And then they see how weird I am or made them uncomfortable. And there was never a second date. So I had to work on myself a lot, really. So, um, and uh, I actually give her uh, respect for saying it was an email and she emailed me back like, hey, Malcolm, I'm so, so sorry. So, I mean, I don't want to, but I don't want to go out again because... I didn't think there was good communication between us and I don't really understand you really. And I remember that email and I took it kind of more sensitive back then. And you know, why me? Poor little me. What's wrong with me? All that good stuff. And I think I wrote a rap song about how I couldn't get a girlfriend. And that was really lame. Actually, it didn't even have a flow to it. It was just like random poetry but maybe that's cool too. And then, so I did, I did have a uh, serious girlfriend for three and a half years and I'm not going to say anything about her in this one, but, um, that was, that's a good experience. But after that, I went back to the, um, no, I was in, I was actually in the online dating scene. So I'm going to share my story. I mean, my experiences of just random dates and it's not really a story in chronological order or anything, but the first of uh, one I just mentioned, that was like an early experience. So what happened was I had a roommate and she was cool and we became like really close friends. And she, uh, she was younger. She was like 21 when she moved in and Burbank, I had a two bedroom apartment in Burbank. And then 
a history of roommates and when she moved in she was from chicago and she lived in hawaii for like maybe a year and a half or two years and then when she moved to la she was kind of like she would call herself a free spirit and she had to get things out of her system to have the do some kind of dating experiences stuff that she didn't do right so then she at one time she was playing like 10 different guys man so then i mean i I never tried to date her we were just friends right so then i kind of started acting like her and and to a certain point and then i was uh, i would join the online dating scene i was like okay i'm gonna do this too and join this uh she meets these guys off okay cupid and i was like okay i'm gonna join too and actually my, my homie said like man you should you should join these um these websites man because there's all these hot bitches on there you know there's that's what he said. He was, you know, it was like there's plenty of fish and OK Cupid and all that stuff. And then back then, the Tinder, um, it was more of like the website, so not the apps. The apps took over after that, but it was the Tinder was known for the hooking up, like a hookup culture. And if you're on, if you're on Tinder, you would want to hook up, and you weren't on Tinder to get like a girlfriend or to go actually date and get to know somebody that was known as like more of like one night stand and going to have sex. So then the okay Cupid thing made a profile. And then my picture, I remember I was like 33 in the picture and I looked older than I do now. And it's cause I didn't meditate. And then the first girl, like I matched up with, I was excited and her name was Molly and she was from, a. Uh, she was a Gemini from, I think from Bakersfield, real shallow and pretentious person, I think. So I got stood up at an uh, Italian restaurant, um, Little Tony's, and I know about that restaurant from um, the pizza shop. Actually, it's got like a, people have like a love-hate relationship with this pizza shop, Joe Peeps in North Hollywood, no Sherman Oaks. You go in there and you can write your name and write go to hell or whatever on the wall. And it'll be there for, I think they clean the walls every like once a year. And then the manager, the owner of the Martin, he said, oh, there's a picture of Elijah Wood when you go in there. And he said, uh, yeah, nice kid. Uh, he, he comes in here, you know, he's, he's, there's a picture of him with the, putting his arm around the, one of the guys that cooks the pizza and. He had like the sunglasses on his shirt, like Guns N' Roses, and it's like, "Hey, it's Elijah Wood, man, from the Good Son, from the '90s movies, or what else was he in? The Good Son and something called North, and then, uh, man, I forget the other one he was in that I liked. Anyway, he said, "Yeah, he comes here and he goes to Little Tony's too." I was like, "Hey, if it's good enough for Elijah Wood, let's go to Little Tony's Pizza, and it's a it's a good pizza shop. It's kind of like the one like." You know how Pizza Hut was good in the 80s, and then after that, in my opinion, they went downhill, but it's an old school, kind of has been around in Hollywood, I mean, North Hollywood with that fork fork in the road on Lancashire since the late 50s, early 60s, and I would take girls there on dates, so then I got stood up by this girl named Molly at the, over there, and I was kind of, it was when I worked at Coca-Cola, and she was on my mind like all day, and I was, I was fixing up the back room, I was like, I wonder what the state's going to be like, right? So then I get there and I'm like, hey, where are you? Text message, whatever. And then she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like seriously throwing up right now and throwing up so hard right now and I can't make it. And I'm like, this motherfucker. So then I think that's when I still used to drink a little bit, drink on the weekends, to, which I think is stupid, but it was, I think I had a glass of wine read some article in the Los Angeles Times, real depressing, and then uh, told my roommate about it when I got home, and then she actually got stood up, I and mean, she was kind of cute, but she got stood up too, so maybe that was the thing. I know like in LA, the, um, or maybe every, I mean, I guess everywhere, like it's called ghosting and flaking out, and they, they, they got they got big, you know, so um, that was that date. And then after that, I think we still talked too. I was such a loser. I still used to talk to her. And then, and I said, "Hey, when are you gonna um, when you wanna hang out or something?" And she said, "Soon, soon, Tang." And I'm like, "What the hell does that mean?" And it means like Sunday in German. 
And I was like, do you really think you're better than me because you said something in German or, you know? I don't know, maybe she was German, but yeah, we didn't hang out after that though. So, uh, the next one. Oh yeah, so then I went out on, this is really funny, went out with this Asian girl and met her at the same restaurant and then I think how we kind of started talking was um on her profile she said um if you ever uh if you ever say our first hangout or first date should be at your place then then um <laughs> then don't message me and I'm like oh I'm sorry that like that happened to you and guy said that to you and then we ended up uh going to the restaurant and that's the thing that's the thing I kind of wanted to say was like if we're all if men and women are supposed to be equal then like how come how come they never ask me out right like so I'm the one that's supposed to ask you out and then and decide like where we're gonna go and kind of the one thing about like how I've been um single and haven't been on dates is like okay we're equal like nobody asked me out what the hell's wrong with me right so I guess we're not equal and I'm, we're we're back to the fifties, and I'm supposed to like ask you to marry me and ask ask you out, and where we're gonna go, and like decide every fucking thing for the damn relationship, right? So that's that's proof right there. And yeah, leave a comment on what you think in the, on YouTube or whatever. So yeah, we went on. Uh, sorry if I kind of sounded kind of came across uh, rude, but I mean that was that is a legit kind of statement like hey we're equal but what's up with this so i'm more i guess i got like more of a traditional sense from i mean being from south carolina and i got like i guess the, my dad's side of the family was like you got you a girlfriend yet and they would say that and like when are you gonna get married and get a girlfriend and then actually the other day i said uh i said to my mom I was like, how come you ever, ne you never asked me if I'm trying to get a girlfriend or get married? And then she said, well, you said that all you do is work. And then on your free time, you hang out with at the temple with a bunch of nuns. So I thought that's how it is. And that's actually the best thing that she, that, like, she actually listened to me. That was actually the coolest thing she said in like a while. And then she was actually listening to me. So, um, yeah, that's how it is. And, uh. Let me see. So here's an Asian girl. I forgot her name. This is like in 2016, so or 2017, eight years ago. Wow. And then, so I show up. I show up to the date wearing a suit, right? So that's what I, <laughs> that's what I like to do is like wear a suit and go to the Italian restaurant like I'm in Goodfellas or or Scarface or something. And then, so we're walking down the street, or she was walking towards the restaurant, and then here I am, and I kind of be like, hey, um ready for our date <laughs> and then she said uh why are, why are you wearing a suit and i says because that's what i do i dress up in suits and go to the, <laughs> go to the restaurant and like i'm important or you actually get better customer service too and kind of scares people because they don't know they don't know who you are like i would go to um bob's big boy bob's big boy in burbank jay leno goes there by the way to show off his badass cars and I'd go there at like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning wearing the suit. And the waitress was scared as hell. She's like, well, come on in, sir. And then get the Belgian waffle with the strawberries and all that. And I mean, you don't know if I'm the owner's son. You don't know what's going on. So I have um, realized, yeah, you do get treated like better customer service dressing like that. Like, what can you expect? You know, you go in wearing like metal shirt or something. Or So here's the date. And then, and then uh, we... I think we had to wait like five minutes to get a table, but it was, you can get a table in this bar section. So we went to the bar because you can get there faster. And then, yeah, I ordered pizza and stuff. And she got, she was actually, was like serious alcoholic. So then she had to drink three drinks just to put up with me and to get over that and hold the suit thing. So then she was talking about um what she does for a living, some kind of like medical regulator. And I said, what regulate like war the Warren G song. And she said, yeah, I've heard the stupid song before. <laughs> Cause I don't know what like a medical regulator is. Like you, you meet girls that are like in these high positions and here I am like, you know, working, working class, like Coca-Cola. And I'm like working with these young kids and then 
jobs that are easy to get and I get stuck at these jobs. So anyway, she, she had a few drinks and then I said something really creepy and stupid about like printing out, like I'm kind of making my, making fun of myself from eight years ago. And I mean, what better person is to make than to make fun of yourself. Right. So, but, uh, the past is the past. So I was like, says something about like printing out a picture of, a picture of OK Cupid and making a poster of it and hanging it up on my wall. <laughs> and I think that pissed her off. And then like, not, yeah, about two minutes later, she's like excused herself and like, but she was a, she was a Libra though. So they're kind of, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust a Libra really. I wouldn't go date them, but <laughs> I'm attracted to them. But at the same, at the same time, like watch out, we're not, I mean, we're not compatible at the end of the day, you know, so, but we have the same, um, I'm going to talk about astrology a lot, like, because, because I know what's up, and we have the same, um, planet, I mean, as far as the Taurus and Libra, we have the same ruling, ruling planet of Venus, so, maybe that's why I feel like I know these people before, we met in a different life before, so she politely excused herself and left me to finish eating, and Oh yeah, she said something about some something else about yeah, you keep on dating until you find the person that the right person, right? So she would I think she'd probably go on dates maybe 3 times a week and then she said something about a lot of guys couldn't deal with her drinking and honestly, I couldn't if uh, uh yeah, I couldn't deal with that kind of drinking either if I were going to go out with her, so that's the end of that story. So Next story is um used to used to meet these girls on there and like we'd talk on the phone. I'd make them call the like the call the landline phone. Yeah, I actually had the landline phone and at one point I had no cell phone for like I think six months and I'm proud of that too, actually. <laughs> How are you gonna survive without a cell phone? And uh yeah, let's not get too much into that, but um this girl, she was a, she was a Taurus too, so she was pretty cool, and we talked on the phone a little bit, and then the first date was at a restaurant in Monrovia, and that's kind of way out there, so then, uh, that's actually the hottest girl I've ever been out with in, in my life, actually, so, um, I remember the pictures of her, and, uh, the date was, you know, she would, she actually suggested I bring my art portfolio she, so she could see the artwork. That was pretty cool. And we talked a lot about that, but I didn't really think she had anything interesting to say. She was talking about her sisters and her job. And she had a boring job, some kind of medical thing about something about milk or something. <laughs> and I didn't think anything was really like, I mean, at the end of this date, I'm going to mention something. So yeah, like, um, after that, we, yeah, we had uh, actually uh, drank a bottle of wine together, and she had a, she had her life straightened out, man. She had her goddamn life straightened out with her car and everything, and um, I got lost on the way home, so then I sent her some stupid message about getting lost, and then on the way home, and then, but after that, like, my whole philosophy was, I'm going to be a badass and not call her, because rather than, like, what's the word um not stalking somebody but when you blow yeah blow up the phone and you're a needy kind of person so then my roommate was she said we should at least like call her and see how, see how she's doing right but if i could go back i probably would have um uh pursued her or take taking more attention to her but um yeah i told my roommate she was like so how'd your date go and then i said you know, she's she's like the kind of girl you take home to meet your parents and more wholesome kind of. You know, she's like, well, that's cool. And then, <laughs> but I said, um, oh no, I just want to go out with some crazy motherfucker. Like, I just want to hang out with some stupid bitch. And she <laughs> she said, well, there's plenty of people like that around. And then it kind of brought me back to the girl that like I was really in love with. And then she was she was from Hollywood and she was kind of like a loose cannon, you know. So. But that was more of a serious, like, serious friendship and relationship. But she was never my girlfriend. But we did hang out a lot and go on dates or whatever. So, Yeah. 
definitely the craziest state I've ever been on. You didn't know if she, if she was going to um, jump in front of a car on Hollywood Boulevard or or bite you in the face, and then anything could happen. And that was actually the best night of my life. And yeah, I'll never forget that night. It's kind of like a fantasy or something, but I'm getting pretty tired of this world and ready for a different world, but you got to do my time, you know, you have to endure this world, so we're all here, so um, next story, uh, this girl, Mexican girl named uh, Rocio, and she told my roommate, I was like, yeah, she's like a found this girl she's like a bbw stepping stone and she said her name is stepping stone <laughs> her name is stepping stone i said no so i can practice fucking her so that i know what the fuck i'm doing when i get when i get with some girl that looks really good and she said yo yeah, well, that's that's smart <laughs> and i was like that's a stupid thing to say now but i mean that's back then that's where i was at so this is life man so this is she was actually a virgo and then um <laughs> Now, I don't want to tell the end of the story now, but uh, that has to do with it. So, yeah, we hung out and then went to her, like some kind of Mexican party or something. And when everybody has music playing, I think it was some kind of celebration. That was fun. And hung out and played guitar with her little brother or something. That was cool. And then listened to a bunch of music. And I think we dated for like, yeah, we dated for like uh, two weeks. So, three weeks. And then she would come over and drink Modelo's and whatever and maybe watch an 80s movie or play cards or something my roommate came home and met her and she said yeah it looks fun you know and then but um so at the end of this uh this whole dating thing with her it was like yeah I don't want to date you because you got the same birthday as my ex-girlfriend as my ex-girlfriend and it was like yeah it was it was one day after her birthday actually and she said I refuse to believe that you won't date me because I have the same birthday as your ex-girlfriend. And that's pretty stupid, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, that was it for that. And then... Who's this? So, oh, yeah, so I was in this um Om chanting group, or I guess meditation. Om chanting when everybody shows up and, and goes like... Um, for 45 minutes and there's this random girl that was in it that I didn't meet before after three months I was into this group right so then she was a disciple she was a follower of um Shakuntali and she's a spiritual goddess or something and she helps women and children or some kind of fundraising thing and then she wears this kind of turban She's 60 and she looks like she's 30. She can walk on broken glass and walk on lava and all kinds of stuff. And I was on the list of people that would get random energy at night sent from her. And which I'd sign myself up to not get that anymore because it would get to the point where I was... This energy that would hit me at night, this some kind of spiritual thing, energy. Because I was dating the girl that was a disciple of her or whatever... And I couldn't be productive after work at night. I'm like, I want to do some shit and I can't do it because I'm getting this energy. So, uh, this cool is kind of like a natural high, but it's a draining kind of thing. And I'm glad that's over with. So. so this woman was married, right? So then we took the Om chanting thing to her house and then like the Om group and then we're all in it. And then she says something about she was in an open relationship. So no, nope, she was married with two kids and then she was dating some guy and then the kids knew about the guy. And what I did was like took her away from that guy <laughs> and asked her out. So I was like, Hey, do you want me to like, um, can I get your, your phone number so I can, come help clean the garage and then that turned into not cleaning the garage and then like having sex in the swimming pool and stuff like that and we would go everywhere we would go like hiking and and then to the beach and then San Diego and then I mean she had a condo in San Diego and it, it, was, it was a lot of fun actually so but it lasted for like months and then that's actually not online dating that's like meet somebody in real life and then she was a little bit older, you know, like 44. And um, 
what else? Yeah, she was a cancer sign. Something about my, my, Mer my Mercury's in Mars and stuff like that. And she, yeah, she was really weird. She would talk about being a Mormon, like ex-Mormon. And then now she's into the spiritual kind of thing. And then, but this was fun. It was like in 2020. What else did I want to say? Yeah, it was like, dated another cancer girl. I think they're kind of talkative. They're kind of chatty, kind of like the Gemini sign, you know, so. It's weird being a guy and being into that, um, astrology so i used to have conversations with my roommate and we would talk about astrology for like hours yeah like how come most libras can't get their damn live straightened out and stuff like that and she was a scorpio so that was they're kind of like sorry about the microphone what is this uh they're kind of like workaholics so um yeah another one was um met her on that plenty of Plenty of fish that was it called P O P O F plenty of fish and then cancer <laughs> sign and then she actually had like um she made herself look good in the pictures and then when I meet her in real life in Pasadena at the New York Cheesecake Factory she had like tattoos of the Little Mermaid or her arms are like bigger than my whole body the tattoos of the Little Mermaid and then she would talk about we kept on talking throughout the whole thing and then figure out how to like yeah we didn't have a second date i mean we couldn't make that work you know but it is what it is man so didn't want to go out again because she was too fat or whatever and yeah i think my problem is like i got greedy i was like looking for some kind of perfect person or like i was in love with somebody and then i would still date try to date somebody else and get to get her off of my mind it was like not working so i suggest for people like if you're not over somebody, then don't go date, you know, so that's, that's a mistake on my part, or I try to find somebody that looked just like, or, or had like the same kind of like life as the same person that I was really, that I really liked, and then that's what I get, so, yeah, um, I'm getting kind of bored of this, actually, like, uh, I wish someone was here to like make fun of me, so, <laughs> Kind of wanted to say something about, um, what is this? Uh, I'm just going to skip ahead, man. Um, last real date I was on was actually like, this episode is about like LA dating, but this was in Mexico and that was fun. But does that, does that count like to even mention in LA dating? But I mean, I think the hard, the hard thing with people is like the, the social, like the, the, the online kind of thing. And then finding the person that you want and there's like a lot of fake people too and then it's, it's kind of hard to you know it's like hard to survive in LA so I think the whole vibe too because because like I've, if I'm in a different country then the whole vibe is different so then when I, I was in Canada and I met some girl that was easy to talk to and then she became a girlfriend so and then when I was, when I was in Mexico it was easier to easy to date girls down there too so then I'd kind of like blame I'd blame LA and the whole vibe and the energy for that too. Because there's so many people that they're, I mean, they're focused on their careers, you know, so the career is more important than like getting to know somebody and, and, uh, dealing with somebody's problems. And then you got so many people that are like just after sex. And then it's not just guys do this, girls too. Like I've been used for sex by girls. So then one time some girl came over and I was like, Hey, I just got this furniture. I just got this new dresser. And then she was laying on the bed, like, are you going to come fuck me? Or And I'm like, I'm just talking about furniture, trying to be your friend. And you want to be like, use me for sex and use me for a piece of meat. What's going on with that? And then she just started laughing. And I think it's funny too, actually. But yeah, I mean, now it's to the point where like, I can't have sex until I'm married. So then who the hell's going to want to go out with me? And then this is L.A., and then every girl that I like is either like, like a nun or wants to be a nun or something. So then <laughs> there's this girl that she's like, I heard she, she was like, no, I was, I was like trying to ask her out. And then I heard she threw up for like an hour after I said that. And then she wants to become a nun. So then I'm the one that catapulted her career of becoming a nun. So that was pretty funny. And, um. Yeah, last date I was in um, Port Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and um, 
went on this uh not one night stand but um went on this date and took the lift um ride all the way out there it was kind of like 40 40 minutes away from where i was at that hotel and then i get to she was like airbnb and i think she was like venezuelan and she was a pisces actually so that's that's my type right that's the perfect uh match right there perfect kind of woman it's a strong woman right there and we went on a date and it was kind of like a tropical kind of weather nice walk to we went we went to go get a drink and had a nice conversation and she was really interesting and i mean what more could you want you know so then we get back to the airbnb and then she's listening to some cool music and then we get the whole vibe going and i put some moves on her and then i get kicked out of the airbnb so that's what i get so yeah i came like this close and then the 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 guy from the airbnb knocks on the door and what's it called like cock blocks the whole kind of thing and then like hey we had to go and then hey kiss you goodbye and go take the damn lift back home so then um uh, actually matched up with the bbw from um tinder from mexico from puerto vallarta and we still talk to each other for like a year after that we're friends on facebook and then after that i deleted that and then now i can't find her and now i'm to the point where like I'd like to date her, and now I can't have her, so, yeah, man, that's what I get, so, uh, what else, um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's gonna be the end, um, end of this episode, and, yeah, yeah, look out for me, and shout out, shout out to Morocco, we got somebody checking, checking, uh, listening to the podcast over there, yeah, Northern Africa, yeah, um, Film recommendations, uh, Cape Fear and and uh, actually both Cape Fears, man. I'm sorry, both of them. I mean, hands down, and Mean Streets, 1973. I don't even deserve to say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. So, if you haven't seen it, go see it and have fun. Music, man. I tried to listen to some um, indie rock yesterday, and then here we are listening to it, and then. I kept on switching the songs, and then I go back to hardcore, so then I was like, yeah, thank you, hardcore, for, like, back to reality, right, so, at least I'm li listening to some real shit right now, you know, you kind of tell, like, as a listener, if you're listening to some fake-ass shit, so, yeah. anyway, sorry, um, Biohazard, song called, uh, Each Day, it's a hard song, so, Stay the World Address, this is Day the World Address, uh, 1994. Yeah, I mean, I kind of grew up on that, so my older brother, um, actually, he was the first one to say something about that, and then I went to summer camp, and then the kid that got me into Wu-Tang, he was into, he was into them too, so, that's a great album, actually. Actually, I think, um, the song Punishment by Biohazard has, like, one of the best intros in metal, period. And that's off the other, uh, the the other album, uh, Ur Urban Discipline. So, uh, yeah, I was listening to Spotify, and then I went back to the MP3 player, and I could tell the difference between the quality. I'm like, man, the damn, because I'm used to listening to the CDs. So then, that compressed Spotify quality, you can tell the difference. And I know they're working on it; they're charging people a dollar more a month or whatever. And then, speaking of that, I heard something about um get better quality as far as like being like a mu real music fan from like uh amazon and uh title i think it's t-i-d-a-l and then spotify is known for the podcast and then yeah i'm on there too so it's cool i mean i like the i like the recommendations and the way they map everything i mean they've they sort everything out on there i don't know about some of these playlists though but that's playlists that people make so yeah, hope I didn't depress people about this dating thing, but uh, been want to been wanting to talk about it for a while. So yeah, yeah, watch out for me. The next one's gonna be uh, might have a guest uh, depending on schedules and yeah, I got some ideas. So uh, peace out and okay, all right, thanks, bye.